I'm supporting WCN and all the other conservationists. Um, I feel really incredibly privileged to be with people like us, people that I sort of grew up admiring. And actually, got, I got to admit something to you. I got waylaid. I came to Berkeley in uh, the late 60s to d get a degree, and my intention was totally to go back to Africa, where I'd grown up, I'd born there, I saw the wildlife, I wanted to study those cats. And I so happened to pick up a National Geographic uh, the last year of my studies, and there was a picture of, guess who? The snow leopard. And it waylaid me. And off I went to Nepal. And so since 1975, I guess, roughly in there, I've been working on a cat that I maybe see on average once a year, if I'm lucky. I, go, I have gone four years without seeing it. But somehow, this cat just gets out in me all the sort of passion. And I think it's because of the culture of the people. I think it's because of the landscape. And so what I want to share with you, uh, just give you an overview of how we go about uh, conserving snow leopards, working with local people. I'm going to cover some common ground, so I apologize that for people that have seen it before, but I'm going to try to give you new stuff too. And most of all, I want to celebrate along with WCN tenure. So we've been working with the Conservancy since 2000. It's our 10th year, and we're very proud of our accomplishments. But it's been possible really for only two reasons. One is we've had cat ambassadors. And you meet a cat, and it'll change your world. Here is me in 1990, when Chinsu was born. Chinsu is with the Wild Cat Education Conservation Group up in North Bay, and she's a great ambassador. She's raised a lot of money that's enabled us to do this. Without her, we could not have done what we've done. The next person, very bittersweet, Renchen Wanchuk. He died way too young this year. He died of Lou Gehrig's disease. He was really the pioneer for the community conservation work in um, Ladakh, and I really want to dedicate my talk to him and all his sort of mentors and people that are carrying on now from his legacy. Studying snow leopards, of course, is real difficult because the terrain is incredibly rugged. You work in at 12,000 feet, up to 17,000 feet. There are no roads, so you can't jump in a Toyota and sort of cruise there. You have to jump on a camel if you're lucky, or you use your two feet. And we had to walk 12 days just to get to our study area when we first collared them in the 1980s. And obviously, we wouldn't come out very quickly. We'd stay there for months at a time. So studying the cat is extremely difficult. Um, give you a quick overview of some of the